with the client in restorative child's pose, basically, of yoga here, to try and stretch the lumbosacral spine into flexion, especially after having been lying down for a period of time, face down, prone, uh, there's a very nice joint mobilization we can do to try to increase this flexion, opening up of the uh, lumbar spine, especially here, toward flexion. And we can begin first just being very general, dropping down with body weight using our forearms. And if I have my right forearm here on her sacrum, her apex of her sacrum, pushing that way, and my left forearm pushing the other way, then we get a general stretch mobilization for all the joints between my two points of contact. As I start to get my points of contact closer together, then the stretch is a little more focused on fewer joints and therefore a bit more powerful, a bit more specific. But now if I literally want to mobilize one joint at a time, then what I can do is I can use my hands and I'm going to take my left hand, which is my cephalad hands, closer to her head and put that more caudal toward her body and then take my caudal hand, the one closer to the bottom of her body here, the tail end, and place it more cephalad above my left hand and notice that my my left hand is running transversely, my right hand is running longitudinally with her body and I find with the ulnar side of my left hand one spinous process and I grasp the next spinous process with my right hand and I like to use this groove between the thenar and hypothenar eminences, the inter-eminential groove. Some people might want to use the thenar eminence or hypothenar eminence, but I like the groove there. And I can push away from each other to open that segmental joint level into flexion. Then go to the next one, and then the next one, and then the next one. And I can be very, very specific because I'm literally pinning bone A and moving bone B. So maybe I'm on L4 with my left hand and L3 with my right, then L3 with my left hand, L2 with my right, etc. And I can be very specific with this joint mobilization. And now we'll give you a close-up so you can better see the contact. So now a close-up. I go transversely with my left hand. I go longitudinally with my right hand and I push away. So I push in the inferior caudal direction with my left hand and I push in the superior cephalad direction with my right hand. I move to the next joint level. I repeat. Or I can stay at one level and do nice oscillations, grade four joint mobilization. Very nice to open up the lumbar spine into flexion, especially important again after the client has been lying face down for a period of time. Viewing a skeleton so we can see the intersegmental joint mobilization, I can take my left hand, and this is L5, L4, L3, for example, and I pin L3. I take my right hand, and I find L2 spinous process, and I push them away from each other. Then I find L2 and L1, and I push them away from each other. And this is opening the lumbar spine into flexion. Again, make a point transversely across with one hand. My cephalad hand goes lower. My caudal hand goes higher. And we just open up the spine into flexion. If you liked this video, know that it is part of our video streaming subscription service. Click the link below for more information and receive a free ebook when you sign up. Mm -hmm.